Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. I left off in the last video showing you that I was at Ellis Training Works. It's a good training center with some great facilities. I passed my FGAS training. It was quite intense and the training was excellent. Some of the best I've ever had. The only downer were the parking wardens and parking and thieves trying to break into your van. So it was either the parking wardens trying to rob you or the thieves. But other than that, overall, very good training center. It was very good. Money well spent. Very good facilities for showing you about refrigerants and air conditioning. Theory and practical. Back at work, I had a situation where I had three boilers not operating. I was told that the boilers were finished. That there was no chance. I had codes coming up, all sorts of fault codes. One of them that I had a problem one of them was was stating that I had a problem with ignition I believe or a blockage or something some problem with the air pressure switch so I pulled the unit out and inspected it and thankfully there was a spare gasket this is the burner I tried to look to see if I could see through it, but it didn't look that clean. Have a look inside. Inside the unit, looked like it could do a little spray down or a clean. But my main concern was the washing the burner down itself, getting some water on it. Let's have a, a bit of a deeper look inside. If you have a look down there, you can see it needs a good wash. And this is further down inside the unit. Okay, so I was just as you do look to see where you can tap in to get water in a plant room, I found somewhere. And then washed the burner through. Nice and clean. What methods do you use to wash your burners down? Some people use compressors. Others use water and vinegar, 50-50. So I put the... The heat exchanger, the top of the heat exchanger was very hot. So I used that to dry the unit. You can see here, that's the heat coming off the unit, even though it's off. So this is it now when it's been cleaned. So I got everything back together and the unit light lit up. At first I forgot to put my leads on. I had it at 90 Celsius, I was just testing and I wanted to get temperatures back up. And then this boiler one was also on and then also boiler three was. So let's rewind now. This is when I first came into the plant room when I got the call. So I went to the BMS and there was all sorts of problems. Then I went over to my boilers and my middle boiler was just sitting in stage five. This boiler here was at 24 Celsius. So I left it doing its thing. I didn't want to disturb it, but then I had two other boilers that I needed to work on. Remember, I was told that these are dead as a doornail. So I had a biomass boiler on, but there was an issue with it. I don't have my biomass ticket either, do you? And I was told there were some safety issues. So I had to leave the biomass boiler and get my boilers on. But they had fault codes on them and they weren't clearing for love or money. So this is the system. The boilers, the expansion vessels, the pumps and so on. So I switched the pumps over. And I kept just checking the Billy Basics at first before. So one of the units had a blank display. So it seemed like a bit of a obvious thing. There was a lead missing. The other unit which you saw me repair, was the sitting in stage five, which I believe is 
waiting for the air pressure switch to be satisfied or something like that to close or to open something of that nature whereas boiler one somehow i turned it off for a very long time and for, for almost the, the whole weekend and then when i came back and turned it on hey ho it just came back on but not on the first instant so i can't tell you what was wrong with boiler one the burner probably may need cleaning out the pumps, I was checking to make sure the pumps were operating because the pumps could be the problem. So boiler free slowly was working its way up. I could not understand why it was taking so long. It, pro it may have been something, there may have been some sort of sludge in the system or something going on, but it wasn't, I'm expecting the boiler to go up high, but it just seemed like it was modulating in low fire or something couldn't force it into high fire on service mode or anything okay in this situation here i had pumps that weren't working some versatemp pumps not the hu but the versatemp pumps were not working basically only one side this particular side was powering the twin pumps you can see that one was activating there but i checked the phases above checked the phases below but what all what needed happening was I needed to reset the units. I was checking the numbers on them to see if they corresponded with the numbers here. You can see the 18, the 19, the 20, and so on, the 15, the 16, and the 17. That's with the power going up. What happens if the contactor just needed resetting? In this job here, I was just carrying out some servicing to some boilers. I saw that the condensate trap looked like it hadn't been cleaned out since the boiler had been installed, I assume. So, gave the traps a wash out, a rinse out, and then replenished the water. Not worked on one of these before. But very similar to other boilers. Have you worked on this particular unit before? Quite compact. So I was checking my combustion readings. Had to force the unit on. It's a back C six hundred. I think it's a six thirty. It was fairly simple to get in high and low. You have to hold the orange button down until it starts flashing, and then you hold it down again sometimes when you're doing servicing it just seems a bit too hard for people to clean out their condensate trap but some of these are made so easy it's, it's like an old brainer washing it out I had another unit while i was just checking the checking the air pressure switch going to a fluid dilution so always remember that you should make use of the bms to have a look at when things have happened so i went on this one to check the history So I just wanted to see when did the building start losing the temperature. So I went to the latest and then worked my way up to see when the problem occurred, when the boilers tripped. Because I was told it just happened, but that wasn't the case. When I looked, I saw that it had happened several days before I went to entertain it. So here we go. I can see that about two or three days before I got there, that's when on the 17th at 8 a.m. the problem occurred. And so it was about three or four days before I was asked to attend on the 20th. So I checked the air pressure switch, just converted my Miller bar to Pascal's to see why the unit wasn't making. How has it been for you on the road lately? I've been finding that I have to get on the road right about three-ish or so if I'm going to beat the traffic because there's just traffic everywhere. Um, I should live with it, but it's not easy. Either you have to leave out ultra early or leave out after the traffic. But going in and around London has been quite tricky. Whereabouts are you based? Are you based in the UK? Where is it? Where you're living, do you find there's much traffic on the road and at what time is it starting? But on a lot of my journeys, 
it hasn't been easy but I've got little um, ways of getting by when I'm on the road for three to four hours. It's, I'm not always on the road for three to four hours. Sometimes it's two hours in a day. Sometimes it's four hours, but I get by by with music or with calling people, other engineers or discussing jobs, listening to books. But some of my journeys have been very difficult. But it's the nature of the game when you're in the commercial world. You, you're on the, you're on the road a lot. I've been crossing the ferry a lot, the um, Woolwich ferry, in the early hours of the morning or in the afternoon. Okay, let me know what you've been up to as well. Until next time, bye bye bye.